So the first step in healing from any type of trauma is learning how to resource. And a resource is something that makes us feel good in our body, joyful, empowered, uh, expanded, grounded, all those types of things. And when I work with clients to heal from any type of trauma, we always start first by resourcing. So what's a resource? A resource can be something like um, nature. Nature is a great resource. It helps activate our parasympathetic nervous system, which is what calms and soothes us. So maybe you like uh, surfing or hiking in the mountains or um, just going on a walk in, in a beautiful garden. Those are all great, great examples of resources. Or maybe you really like animals. Maybe you have a pet that you love or you remember horseback riding when you were a child and you love that. Or maybe you're friends with your neighbor's dog. Um, it could be anything creative such as cooking or making art or playing your guitar or just redecorating your living room. Uh, another, another example would be something physical like playing basketball or um, uh, tennis or just sports that you like. Um, any type of physical activity will work really well um, as long as it's not what got you injured and what didn't traumatize you. For example, if you broke your leg skiing, don't pick skiing as your resource because that's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. Um, stick with something that you only have positive memories from, whether it's doing yoga or um, hula hooping or um, playing tennis, whatever it is that you that you enjoy. And also keep in mind that it doesn't have to be something you're currently engaged in doing. Uh, this can be something if you used to love skateboarding and no longer do that, or maybe stand-up comedy was your favorite thing. Um, as long as they still have good memories associated, you can go ahead and use something that you're no longer doing. Um, and another important resource is creating a safe place. So a safe place might be, for somebody, it might be your bedroom, or for someone else might be um, a memory in your grandmother's kitchen, or um, some place in nature that you like to hang out. If, if nothing comes to mind as, as a safe place, you can create something in your imagination decorate it however you like, or just it could be indoors or outdoors, whatever makes you feel really um, protected, safe, and um, nurtured, that's going to be a good, a good thing. And your nervous system doesn't know the difference between something you've imagined and something that's really happening, and that's why this will work as well. So sometimes when people are recovering from stress or trauma, they might say, oh, no, everything's crap, I, nothing makes me feel good, I can't do this, or I'm not good at visualizing. It doesn't matter, anybody can do this, we just have to get a little more creative. So in that instance I might ask, well, what's something you're wearing that you like? And it could just be like, oh, I, I like this necklace, what do you like about it? Well, it reminds me of a friend who gave it to me uh, on a special occasion. Or maybe you remember a moment that you accomplished something that you feel proud of, like you won an award or um, you were recognized for something in particular, you can remember that and, and, it, and, and that'll be a really good resource. Um, it's good to create a menu of resources because sometimes one example is going to work better than others, so you want to start building a list. So the next step is to start to imagine or remember yourself engaged in that activity. And while you're doing that, you're going to start to become aware of your physical body. What's going to happen while you're remembering salsa dancing or rocking out at that concert that you really enjoyed? So you're going to start to notice some physical sensations in your body. And this is your body letting us know that we've, we've accessed that part of the nervous system that controls our instinctual survival responses. And this is what we want to have happen. So as you're starting to track your sensations, and um, imagine your, your resource, it's going to start opening things up. You might notice tingling, you might notice, oh, my shoulders dropped, or you might notice something subtle like my breath deepened, or you might feel some warmth. There's all kinds of possibilities, but this lets us know that, that it's working. So if um, you try this a couple times, you might not get it on the first time, don't worry. Um, it, will, it will happen if you just keep uh, practicing the resource and, and noticing your sensations. 
So just to be clear, it's not trying to find out what sensations you felt back then when you were doing that activity. It's what are you noticing right now in this moment while you're imagining or remembering that particular sunset moment in Hawaii or that water skiing jump. Be patient. This may take a few tries. Don't worry. Um, just continue to think of your resource and track your bodily sensation. And um, lastly, I just want to mention that everyone's different. Everyone's level of trauma and stress are different. So if at any point while you're doing these exercises, if you feel unsafe or uncomfortable, please stop. It's just probably a sign that maybe you need to do some work with a practitioner who's trained in somatics and can help you in a more contained way. So that's all for now. Um, please check back for part two where I'll be demonstrating with a new client. And if you'd like to post any questions or comments below, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching.